You can actually get a heater built onto it too. All right, page one dash four. I'll hold it up here. So you see the, the two actuators there look a little bit different. The one on your left is a NEMA two. The one with the enclosure on the bottom, that's NEMA four right out of the box. So that you wouldn't need any other type of enclosure. You just order it with that N fourth in. This is what it will look like. And it's able to be mounted outdoors. And, that I, and I tell my customers, make sure you get your conduits fit tight on there because the right. conduits aren't NEMA 4, so if water leaks into the conduit, that's where it's going to come in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've had that happen already, so. What is your basic intention on wiring up these pigtails? Uh, what's the expectation on terminating those? Uh, as far as what? Well, I guess my experience was one, <laughs> and I was expecting to uh, bring the wire to the unit and terminate it at the unit, and I had to come up with some configuration to adapt to that. Oh, I see. So you were expecting a terminal strip on the actuator? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, in some instances, well, really on the non-spring, you can get terminal strips. On these, then you're just basically wire nutting them up a junction box. Yeah, that's what I ended up having to do. Is yeah. Try to jump to the yeah, that's... Like in Chicago, where I'm at, we have to have the conduit on everything. Like, I, I can't use the dash T's in the city. Any other questions? On okay. Next thing we're going to talk about are actuator types. We talk about spring return, non-spring, electronic fail-safe, and what the differences are. Uh, talk about the purpose of a spring and spring return actuator. And talk about how the actuators respond to loss of power versus loss of control signal. Which isn't actually in this section. What's that? It's not actually in this section. Oh, it's not in this no. section? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it eventually because I know it's in here somewhere. <laughs> um, so you can see our line of uh, spring return actuators here. TF up through the EF. Uh, you see these kind of black and white pictures back there. Those are our old generation of the AF and NF series actuators. You'll probably run into a lot of those out there if you're working in buildings that have had Belima for a long time. The AF was one of our biggest selling products. Uh, a couple years ago, we changed over to the AFB which has a, a higher torque rating and a smaller torque. Up here, these are uh, some NEMA 4 housings that you can get different from the, the EF that's NEMA 4 like that. Um, these are suitable for the AF, B, and NFB. Wow. That's a lot to read. You want to read all that? Now, the, what I really want to point out here is the majority of our actuators out of the factory are NEMA 2, with the exception of the ones that we were talking about, the EF, the N4, and those two enclosures that you can get for the AF or NF. Um, but everything else comes out as, as NEMA 2. You can see here these are constructed for indoor use, uh, provide great protection against you know, personal damage to them. Um, and a small degree of protection against dripping or light splashing. With that said, if you were to install, um, just kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but installing a valve, we never want to see the actuator mounted below the valve itself. Off to the side is fine, um, above is certainly fine. Problem is, if you have it mounted below, condensation could run down into the electronic actuator. Obviously, water and electronics aren't the best, uh, best of mates there. So, um, <laughs> certain image of ZS360, so just picture in your mind <laughs> what a ZS360 looks like. It doesn't have that on it. It is in, just a picture in, at the back of that damper actuator section. <laughs> We do have the ZS3 or ZS260, which is our explosion proof housing. So 
in the middle of page 5-8 if you want to see what it looks like. And Angie's expecting an order from each of you for at least one of these answers, <laughs> 260 before you leave. That will help all of us make our numbers. I get a lot of requests for explosion proof valves for like water reclamation facilities and stuff. And Polimo itself does not offer explosion proof valves. You can get the explosion proof housing, but that is only for damper actuators for air. Right. So if you need if you need wa water, I would say probably contact Don. Or Don probably reach out to somebody else. Like I have a couple guys in Chicago that I've right. been directing people to. Yeah. They're they're very hard to find. Yeah, they are. And they charge a lot of money too. They charge a lot of money. <laughs> inch pound GK, then KQ, which is a quick runner, 54 inch pounds, and the AHK, the linear drive that I was talking about, which is nice for uh, pneumatic retrofits. If you have a pneumatic retrofit, it's an instance where you have to have fail safe. This is the only thing we have. We do not have a spring return linear action. Fire and smoke. Oh, this page has the one. <laughs> so you see, we go from the 30 inch pound up to 180 inch pound. Um, this one here, the small one, 30 inch pound, that's about 80% of the fire and smoke that comes up. Non spring return or fail in place. See again, we run from the 18 inch pound up to the 360 pound uh, GM series. Step back, what's two slides? See this GK here, it starts with the G, it's 360 just like the GM. That's because they took this GM actuator and added the, all the capacitors into it, and that's how we came up with the electronic fail signal. And then over here, you can see the, another uh, linear style actuator, uh, non spring format. And then this is the rotary actuator that I was telling you can go to the full 360 degrees. Uh, I say that if you're modulating, it'll only go 270. But if you do uh, two position control, it will it'll go 360. I think it's 10 times. And up here, we also have uh, NEMA 4 housings. The GM enclosure is just NEMA 4, whereas the uh, NM AM enclosure is NEMA 4X. The difference between 4 and 4X, 4X is also corrosion resistant, as well as the weather resistant of the NEMA 4. You can see down here uh, different torque ratings under the NM and AM. The reason for that is when you put them in this enclosure, torque goes down slightly. So, for example, an AM with the NEMA 4 enclosure is only 140. So the question out to you guys, why would you choose a fail-safe over a non-fail-safe actuator? Safe for your kind of safety. What you're doing with like a fume, but you want it to fail close or fail open, right? So you would set it to fail open almost power. Sure. Yeah, there, there's a variety of reasons why you would want fail safe. Um, that's one example. Another example uh, would be on an outdoor air damper. You're going to want that to fail close so you don't freeze a coil. Things of that nature. Just like you said, what does the application demand? So in this scenario here, so this looks like Chicago. <laughs> or anywhere around here in the last yes, time. It was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. um, just looking at this, 
the stamp.